I'm Mac, and this beautiful woman that's to my right is Myra, and today we are excited as we are embarking on our very first, um, I guess we call it a Favorite Scripture February, and today we are going to be focused on James chapter 1, and the main verses are 19 and 20. And so, we want to also acknowledge the person who recommended this scripture to us. Um, her name is Kristen Crisp, and she is a good friend of ours right here in Guatemala, and we've um, had wonderful fellowships with her and her husband, Julian, who um, he is my brother from across the pond, and that means actually that he's British. And so together they um, do a lot of things to help people here in Guatemala where we live. Honey, I'm going to turn this over to you and you can open us up in prayer and then uh, do what you need to do in reference to that. I want to make sure we got you. There we go. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who is and was and is to come. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for every opportunity we have to share the word. We thank you for those who are participating right now and in the future. We thank you, Lord, that you are God and there is none like you. We worship you. We adore you. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. 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 I amen. thought I was really together. I had typed out some things. Did I type out the scriptures? No. <laughs> so I had, to, <laughs> and I had to open it up, so I want to make sure I read it correctly. So it's, it's James uh, 19, right, 1920. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And I'm going to read the, below that. It says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity, superfluity, I'm Spanish, superfluity, superfluity, right? <laughs> um, naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. The engrafted word, that's that was important to read that part because it's, you can't just read a scripture and not what, what comes before and what comes after because it kind of amplifies it a little bit more. Um, what he's talking about is loving God on the trials in this first first chapter. And, and that part in my Bible says loving God on the trials. And it says, you know, the words that we speak and the actions that we do are based on how we respond to what we hear. But it says here, we have to be slow, thoughtful, and not quick. It says, every man be swift to hear. And that part is the swiftness. Listen, be attentive, but slow to speak and slow to wrath. Now, I, I can't say I've, I've never spoken out of turn. No one can say that. But God helps us through His Spirit to do, uh, do better, to be better. And it's slow to wrath, which, you know, all these three things kept going through my head. And I said, where am I going with this, God? Where are you going with that? And it took me to Ecclesiastes 5. And that says, keep God, fear God, keep your vows. And it says, walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know that they do evil. Do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God, for God is in heaven and you on earth. 
Therefore, let your words be few. And that brought my mind right back to all this is about God. It's not about us because we are representatives of the Most High God. So we have to temper our own temperaments and, you know, our natural responses that we have lived with, some of us, more years than we've been saved. So that, that, that natural man, that carnal man, sometimes responds in, in ways that are not godly, not godly at all. So we have to remember, this is walk prudently when you go to the house of God. Go to the house of God. We are the house of God. <laughs> you know, we, we are those living stones. But draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools. Because the Holy Spirit is living within us. So God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all of that is in us. We have holiness within us, not of ourselves but of Him who is God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to teach us, to train us, to change us. It says, do not be rash with your mouth. Do you think that rashness or, the, or being like really quick about, well, they said this and I'm going to say this and he said this and I'm going to say that. <laughs> That's not necessarily godly <laughs> because you're not thinking, you're not hearing, you're not taking time to contemplate how I should respond to that. And how do we do that? Be walk prudently when you go to the house of God. Like, Holy Spirit, help me here to respond in a way. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But we have an ability within us through the Holy Spirit to respond in a way that will bless the Lord. And it was to me it was really interesting because even in this word, Ecclesiastes, he goes on and talks about making vows. And he, he says, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. But what, pay what you have vowed, better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Because that's what this is about. But it starts with God. It starts with God drawing near to him and listening to him. So it, that made me go to about vows. In Matthew uh, 5, it's, it's part of the Beatitudes. He's on the mountain. He's talking. And he says, Matthew 5, 33. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of, of old, of the Ecclesiastes Old Testament, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. So even in that vow taking, I mean, when you, to, in modern times, I mean, who hasn't heard someone say, I swear I'm going to hurt that person? I swear he makes me mad. I swear I'm going to smack him. That's, that's a vow. That you're speaking these words that mm. really are not from God. And he's saying, don't do that. Because it's foolish. He said, do not swear. And unfortunately, we hear people swearing by heaven. Mm. Using the name of God in vain. But he says, it is God's throne. And even by the earth. For it is his footstool. Or even by a place at that time holy to, to, to them and holy to us. Because we know that's where Christ is coming back. But it's the city of the great king. The great king. Nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black. Like, <laughs> but let your yes be yes and your no, no. You don't have to explain is it. No. I mean, that could be the answer to it. Whatever the situation is. Or, yes. You don't have to go elaborate. We don't have to go elaborate. Mm -hmm. Because I'm speaking to myself also. But I think it's really interesting that in the same, um, in Matthew 3, I'm going backwards. When John the Baptist was baptizing, he was, you know, even in Matthew 5, at the Beatitudes, I'm sure they were Pharisees. Because they were following Jesus all over. 
It comes back to the religious people. Matthew 3, 7, 10. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. What he's saying to these Pharisees, these religious people, is you think you're righteous because you have Abraham. But Abraham is not the completion. The completion is found in Jesus, and that was the downfall of the Jewish people because they did not believe. But they stood firm, and they would say, we have Abraham. We're sons of Abraham. What they were coming out of their mouth was not true. It wasn't the completion of the promise. Because even in the Old Testament, there was a completion. And the completion was the Messiah to come. So they would say harsh words against Jesus. But what did John say? He said, brood of vipers. I said, oh my gosh, that's kind of hard. And I looked that word up. So there's a hard word you can say. But it has to come from the throne. A viper is a uh, venomous ant snake. And when I looked it up, they said it would take a bite and then it would run to the water. And it, because if it didn't, it would be bad. It would die. And they use this analogy to say that sometimes religious people do that bite, that thing that would hurt somebody, say something. And then they run back and say, well, um, I'm a man of God, so I can say, you know, God told me this. But they're killing. But they run back to the Bible and use it in whatever form, fashion they, they feel fit. But, but not Paul. John said, therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. So when we walk around, like, saying things to people, that may be young in the Lord, and we say, you know, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. You know, the Word says, I have something better for you. That's what it says. And then, it's the conviction of the Holy Spirit that the person will say, oh, no, I'm not comfortable doing that. I, I don't feel that's what God wants me to do. They're not to obey Man, they have to obey God. Mm. And that's through the Spirit. So it, we have to be careful that we don't become religious people. Because I, 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 I am involved with a reading program where people write stories. And I read a really sad story about a woman who was in church and grew up in church. And the people in her church said so many negative things about people. And said, they're this, they're that, they're that that it turned her off and she felt that everyone was accusing and putting people down with their words, with their words. And that drew her away to a place where she went 100 degrees, 190 degrees on the opposite direction. But where was the Spirit of God in that? Even in her, because she was looking and hearing, listening and hearing from people voices, what they were saying, not what the Spirit of God was saying. So we have to be careful because we're responsible to speak the truth, but speak the truth according to God's, God's word, not our words or our thinking or our opinion, because if we don't hear, if we're not quick to hear what God is saying, we're going to speak too quickly the things that are not godly. And if we get angry at those things that are bad, and they are bad things, that's not our place. God will revenge anything against us, and he will punish those people who are walking in, those, in that way. But we don't, well, that's not our responsibility. We can say we can say the um, the truth in love, but we don't say it with anger and hatred. But we 
we have to be quick to hear what the Spirit is saying before we say anything. So when this led me further into Matthew, when Jesus was Matthew 12, 34, 37, Jesus was being persecuted again by the Pharisees, Sadducees. He had just healed somebody on the Sabbath. They were, talk, they were plotting against him. They were, have, they were going to kill him. <laughs> that was their plan. And he says in Matthew 33, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, the same thing that that John the Baptist said, how can you be an evil? Speak good things. So what does it say? Out of our heart? Evil. Unless it's been transformed by the word. Being evil, speak good things. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There it is. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word, men may speak. Idle. That's not thoughtful. It's casual. It's just, oh, I'm just going to throw this out without even thinking about it. For every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. And that's the wrath of God. The condemnation of God. In, the, in these two verses, it talks about hearing, speaking, and being about what God wants us to be about. And that is to control under his spirit the things that he wants us to speak. But if we're listening, we will speak those things. And for our reaction to the, the horrible things around us, slow to wrath. It's like being angry. We talked about that. Mac and I talked about that. We can be angry, but sin not. We can be angry at the sin that's, that's going on in this world, but sin not. Because it's the evil one that is in control of what's going on. And there are people who are foolish. And that's a good word in the Bible. Foolish don't know. Mm. They don't understand. They can't hear. And until they're converted, they will continue to be foolish and follow those things. But how can they change if we are beating it up all over the head all the time and saying, you're going to hell. I mean, what you want? I remember when I first got saved, I used to say that. <laughs> and God convicted of me. He, he grew me up. Like, are you telling people they go out of hell because they're not saved? No. How are they going to get saved? We are the epistles of God. His word should be written not only in our hearts, but in our countenance, in our speech, in how we represent him through our words. And Am I saying we're always going to say the right things? No. But we always have within us the ability to go back and say, you know what? I'm so sorry I said that. That was not appropriate. That was not a blessing. And I want to be a blessing to you, not a curse. And I'm not, and I'm not even talking about, you know, the obvious things, homosexuality, abortion. Law. I'm talking about even the elections and <laughs> politicians. I mean, I hate that person. That is from the pit of hell. Those are words from the pit of hell. Because even in the Bible, in Timothy, I think it is, first and second, it says, pray for those in authority. And if, the, if it is an elected politician, we pray for them. We don't speak that word. We pray for them. Even if we don't agree with them, that our prayers will do the work that God has called them to do, to change their hearts, to soften their hearts, to convict their hearts. We're not in control of a man's way. We can only pray to God. God has the authority. He has the power. We are priests, but we're not kings. We're not queens. 
We are servants of the Most High God. We follow His lead. We're not Pharisees and Sadducees all dressed up with our big Bibles saying we have the Word of God. And in conclusion, I want to say this much. James was stoned to death by who? Pharisees. The religious people. By order of a high priest. So do we want to be looked at as Sadducees and Pharisees who order the death by our words, by our anger, to condemn people? Or do we want to be servants of the Most High God that go to God and ask Him, Father, give me a word. I want to hear from you. Because as I was talking about that story, the woman that walked away from, from church because of the people that uh, were so negative and so condemning, she was at fault too because she didn't seek after the true and living God. Mm. She listened to people. The relationship she needed to have, first of all, was with God. But being young in the Lord, she didn't have that strength or the knowledge. She was still a little foolish. So it's not just their fault, it's on her part too. Because she could have sought after God through the word on her own and said, I hear what they're saying, but I want to know you. I want to know what you want me to say. I want to, I want to hear from you, God. And that's why in, in Ecclesiastes, even though Solomon was a wise man, Solomon sinned tremendously. He fell, and he learned from that. But when he says, walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear, rather than to give the sacrifice of fools. Don't stand before God and tell him, well, you know, God, I did this, I did that for you, and it is, I am, you know, I am so thankful you gave me the power to do this and the, and the money, and, and I'm going to bless these people. No, go before God to hear what thus saith the Lord for your life, for your circumstances, for your relationships that you would speak the things that would be a blessing to him. And always, you know, know that we should bear about us the fruit of repentance. That humility that says, I have repented of the draw nearer to him, listening to his heart and waiting on him to know how 